Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's another beautiful day here in the neighborhood, and I'm not Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I'm Donovan Darius. For all those first time watching, I want to welcome you guys this morning, where we're continuing the series, okay, getting the food and the faith that you need for your life. What is it? Think about it. When you think about food, what is that? That's something that our body continuously needs. We can't exist in our lives without food. Our flesh, our body needs food to be nourished. Everything about us needs to be right. If, listen, if I want to put on muscle and I want to run for a long time, I need to make sure I have enough carbohydrates that I get through food so that way I have enough energy to last as the mileage continues to go on. If I wanted to build up muscle, I need to have protein. So I might eat some chicken, I might eat some salmon, I might eat some turkey, I might eat some beans, or I might eat some, <laughs> some meatless meat <laughs> that my wife eats now that, uh, that I have no idea how you do that. But nevertheless, our body needs food, okay? Our body needs food. And in the Bible, it used to talk about, when it talked about food, it talked about bread because they understood that no matter where you go, bread was something that was shared at every meal. Bread was something that people ate that nourished the body. And so in this series, get the food and the faith you need for your life, we're, we're talking about getting what you need for every part of your life, every single part. When we talk about faith, what is faith? Faith is not a movement. Faith is not a doctrine. Faith is not a group of people. Faith is not a time period. Faith is what you need. Faith is determined as, or another way of saying it, is the confidence that you need of what somebody said, what somebody did, what somebody has the ability to do. You see, faith is not a mental thing, okay? Faith is not just something that you know. Faith has everything to do with who you are, your spirit man. You know, the Bible says when we, that God breathed into us and we became life. And so inside of this body we have right now, okay, we have a physical body. Okay? That has within the physical body, it has all types of organs, it has all types of muscles, bones, skeletal, central nervous system, everything. It's so complex that to this day people are still discovering what it's like. But we also have something important that gives this body life, and that is the spirit. We have a spirit, every single one of us. And because you have that spirit, sometimes we can feed the flesh part of us, but our spirit man could be down and depressed and or weak. And so during this series, what I want to do is I want to give you food for your, and faith for your life. And the, way that, and the place that I find that faith, the place, the place that we go to to build up the spirit, man, I don't go to the local gym. I don't go to LA Fitness to fill that up. I go straight to the Bible because it's within the Bible that the Bible says that that is God's inspired word for your soul. That means that God breathed that word out, inspires someone what exactly to write that you need, we need, that can have, that can really quicken our mortal bodies. Think about, think about this. Think about if you had something electrical on the inside of you and somebody had a remote control. And even though it's on the inside of you, whenever they click that remote control, let's say they had a light and you swallowed a light and it was a capsule and it was in a pill, or whatever, and they had a remote control, right? And, and when you swallowed it, Whenever somebody clicks that switch, all of a sudden you see your, your stomach light up. You see your stomach, why? Because the infrared, the power of that infrared connected with that, with that device on the inside and brought about light. Well, so is the same thing when we think about faith. Faith is the confidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. The way, and so as we live our life, we not only have to feed our body food, but we also have to feed our spirit man faith. And in order for us to walk through this life where there's so much destruction, there's so much pain, there's so much evil, there's so many things that make you say, what in the world? The way we grow is we have to grow by faith. You say, well, how do we grow by faith? Well, the Bible says you grow by faith by hearing the word of God. Now, not just any hearing. You ever been somebody, you ever been around somebody and they wanted to encourage you, but they had not, they, they had, they didn't have the right thing to say? Or they wanted to encourage you, but it seemed like no matter what they said, it just didn't connect with you. But then you had somebody come along that connected with you, that said the right things, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you began to get inspired. 
you began to come alive. Something on the inside that began to wake up. Something on the inside began to come alive and bring about a new personality, a new way of looking, a new perspective. Well, that is what the Bible is. The Bible is not just a book. The Bible is full of power. And it's full of anointed words that when they connect with the spirit that God put inside of you, it does miraculous things. Now, here's where the problem is. The challenge is that God gave us a free will. And so he, don't, he didn't force us. He didn't force us to have to do it. God didn't force us to have to trust it. Didn't force us to have to believe it. Didn't force us to have to rely on it. But for those that find it, for those that find it, and for those that understand it, they are experiencing the fact, they're experiencing the fact that this world, <laughs> as we continue this series, Getting the Food and the Faith for Your Life, what I'm going to be coming from is I'm going to give you, and we're going to spend time allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, to speak to your spirit, man. And it's going to uplift you and encourage you in ways that you can't do by yourself. This isn't something that you can do by yourself, but this is the way we were designed. When God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he made us with his big idea of how, he, how we should operate. And he made us in his likeness. That means he made us to walk by faith. Over five times in the Bible, it says the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That means in order for us to live, we have to live by trusting, having confidence in what God said. Now, I know there's going to be times that you're going to look at your situation. You're going to want to say something else. You look at your situation and the feelings of it wants to say something else. You want to define it as something else. But God says the just shall live by faith. He says every word, he said heaven and earth will pass away. Okay, mountains will shake and go get cast into the sea before one of his inspired words don't come to pass. And so you tell me, would you rather trust something that is fleeting, that's here today and going tomorrow? Or would you want to trust something that's been here through generations of time, but also has the power, has the power to do miraculous things? And so today, in this series today, okay, just these next 10 minutes, what I'm going to do is as I give this backdrop, I'm going to read some words. I'm going to read some words out the Bible. And, and as I read these words, understand, these are not my words. I am just a messenger. And what's going to happen is as I read these words, you're going to be encouraged because these words have power. These, per, these words are anointed. These words, like the Bible says, if... if uh, if they captured all the words that Jesus said in books, they said the world would not contain it all. He spoke that much. And so over the years, okay, over the years, they had scholars that slimmed it down through God's inspiration and gave us a Bible. I don't care if you got that little small orange one or you got a big one or you got a really big one and gave us enough that we need that's full of power. You know, somebody may call, hey, the cliff notes of all God said. You know what I mean? But we have enough in there to build our faith, to understand one main thing, the gospel, to understand one main thing, the fact that, you know what, in and of ourselves, we can't do it. We need a savior. We need somebody to help us, to save us from ourselves. We continuously make mistakes and fall short. We need somebody who is perfect, that can, that can pay the penalty price for us, and somebody that did, somebody that the Old Testament talked about was coming, who came, who lived, who died, who was crucified. That means that they fulfill all of the law. Every requirement, every Ten Commandment was fulfilled, and that body was gave up, and that body was sacrificed. But here's the most amazing thing. Because there was a lot of people that died on the cross, okay? There was a lot of crosses back then. That's how they used to, they, that was one of the capital punishments. But this was the only one that went in the grave. And they put, they put soldiers around. They said, you know what? We're going to make sure that this one don't sneak out. Or his peoples, right? They don't come and come pick him out of there in the middle of the night. We're going to put our best soldiers there. But how many of you guys know they said three days later when they came back, he wasn't there. And if you go over there today, 2,000 years later, there's just a sign that says, hey, he's not here. He is, risen. he is risen. And so the very fact that he is risen, he did what nobody else can do. You see, there's so many people within, there's so many doctrines, there's so many religions, there's so many denominations out there. But guess what? Here's the, here's the deciding point. Did the leader of those denominations or religions, did they die and be resurrected from the, bio, resurrected from the dead? The answer is no. 
Because after he was resurrected, he, the Bible says he also, okay, it's historical, it is written, he also showed himself to over 500 people. Over 500 people. After he rose from the dead. And then he ascended to heaven saying, and then his last word says, you know, I'm coming back real soon. But then he says a thousand, one day with God is like a thousand years. And so he still said, I'm coming back soon. And so what do we have? What did he leave us with? He left us with words. God gave us words. He gave us, a, he gave us anointed words that is able to heal our soul. In Proverbs 4, he said, my word is like medicine and it's able to heal, heal your soul. He says, my words. And so this morning, I'm going to read some words to you. I really recommend as we continue to do this, understanding that your faith, we are working on your faith. We're working on your confidence. We're working on, and when you, as you build your confidence, we're working on areas of you that we need for all different areas, for all different areas. Because when God says, when, when what he said, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. And so you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that because it will. And so here's, I'm going to read some of the, I'm going to read some scriptures. These are going to be, they're not going to be in any specific order. Um, but what I recommend you do is that if you have a headache, what do you take? Somebody type it in. If you have a headache, what do you take? If you have a stomach ache, what do you take? Okay. If you got heartburn, what do you take? So. The same way that you take physical medicine for all these things, God says, my word is medicine for your, for, your, for your soul. It will build you up. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so as we understand that, we're getting the words of God, and we're going to speak these things over our, over our life. The Bible says faith comes. That confidence comes. How does the confidence in these areas come? It says it comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word. I can remember that when it comes to the physical part. I can remember what it took. I can remember the things that it took for me to get for me to get better in in some of my skills in the NFL. Okay, if it says faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, then guess what? My ability to tackle came by me tackling and tackling and tackling and tackling and tackling and tackling and tackling. And, tackling. and the more I got better at tackling and tackling and tackling and tackling, the better I got. And the more I got better at that, the longer I played. And the more I got better at that, and the longer I played, the more money I made. And the more money I made, the more people I was able to help and encourage, okay, and help their experiences. And the more, the more I was able to help other people experience, the more I felt more fulfilled. Why? Because it's better to give than receive. And so today, I'm going to read about 10. I'm just going to read about 10, 10 of these areas, um, 10 of these things from the Bible. I'm going to give you exactly where it's found in the Bible so you can go back and reference it. Reference it. Please, somebody, if you can type it, type in the scripture in there because I don't want you to think that this is my word. This is just, a me I'm just a messenger and I want you to be able to go back. And if you hear something, if you hear something that is dealing with an area you're dealing with, what I want you to do is I want you to do a few things with it. Throughout the day or the next couple of days, I want you to keep writing it. And I want you to write it as if you already got it. Because these are promises of God. Okay? He says, my promises are sure. And so I want you to keep writing it. And I want you to keep saying it out loud. Because, again, God speaks. He's, you're made in his, in his image and his likeness. He says, life and death is in the power of your tongue. When you speak, those words come out. God don't be kidding around and just joking around over his life. God don't say, oh, man, these people are on my job. He's killing me. God would never say that. God never say, oh, you know what I'm saying? They're going to take all I have. Oh, my kids are going to be, you know what I'm saying? Somebody, you know, my kids, they're going to be out here in these streets, man. Somebody going to kill them. God, God don't play around like that. And he made you in his likeness. You know what I mean? He made you in his image likeness. So here's, the, here's a couple of them, okay? Okay, and if somebody can type these in, okay? So that you can go back and reference them. All right? Exodus chapter 15 and 26 says this. It says, the Lord's God says this. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And so one of the ways you can turn that around to make it applicable to yourself, you can say, God, I thank you that you are the Lord that healeth me. See, he is the Lord that's keeping your blood running. He's the one that's keeping your heart beating. You ain't got none control over that. That's not you thinking about that. God is saying, I am the Lord that healeth thee. So you're trying to get healing for something in your life. God is saying to you, I am the Lord that healeth thee. But he says, everything you get from him, you must get it by faith. That means that you must believe it when you can't see it. Believing it is seeing it. Not seeing it is believing it. So that's why we say, Lord, I thank you that you are the Lord that healeth thee. 
Number two, Genesis chapter three. It says, your days shall be 120 years. Your days should be 120 years. So you may be 70 years old. You may be 80 years old. You may be 30 years old. You may be 40 years old. But God's promise to us, based off of the nature and the way our body is made and everything, God says, you know what? Your years, should, your days should be 120 years. So that means that God has given us a promise that we have the capacity to live up to 120 years. I didn't say it. He said it. And he made and designed us and, and keeping everything in his life together so that we're, our bodies can make it to that point. Well, we have free will, don't we? You know what I mean? If we go around drinking, smoking, we start doing all this other stuff, we're not exercising, we're not taking care of ourselves, we're not taking care of our spirit, man. Okay, we're worried, we're, we're battled down with all stress and all this stuff. Then guess what? Those lifespans don't get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. If we're drinking stuff with too much sugar, guess what? Then diabetes things happen. You know, I mean, if we're not taking care of ourselves and just eating a whole lot of stuff with fat and pork and all these things that, that are not, not a balanced diet, guess what? We're, we're shooting those things down. God didn't do that. We're doing it. But when we're being led by him, based off his says, he, he gives us the ability. Number three, this is Genesis 15 and 15. God says, God says this. God says, you shall be buried in a good old age. You shall be buried in a good old age. That means God is promising you that you know what? You're not going to die. You're not going to die short. Even if you're going through something right now, so you can turn that around. You can turn that around. Number two, that said your day should be 120 years. Lord, I thank you that you're giving me 120 years that you said in your word. Okay, that I can be here living in this earth. And I thank you that I'm having the habits. I'm putting forth the habits. I'm doing the things in my life. You're giving me wisdom in those areas so that I, my body, that my body can live up to the point of time until you say that it is done to come home with you. Number three, when it said Genesis 15, 15, you should be buried in good old age. Father, I thank you that I, I thank you that I will be buried, that my end, okay, of my life will come in a good old age. I thank you that no matter what I hear around, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening over here and over there, I thank you that in a good old age, I'll transition from time to eternity. That life is not going to suck it, suck it out. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be going too early and I'm not going to be going before my time. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're watching over the days of my life. You said every day of my life is in your book that you wrote it down. But in your book, you also said, I should be buried when it's time. Okay. One, there's, look, it's appointed to, to man once to die. We're all going to pass away. Everybody, no matter how much we have, no matter how much we try to keep it, we're going to pass away. Okay, one time, the first time, there's going to be a first death. But we can talk about the quality of that life. And God, building up our faith, is encouraging us that as we go through things, we can be encouraged by his word. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you may be experiencing something right now, and you're like, man, this may seem like it's taking me out. But I want you to, I want you to repeat this word, write this thing down. God, I thank you. That I should be buried in good old age. In good old age. And so you remember, you reminding yourself. And you keep saying it. Faith comes how? Confidence comes how? Trust comes how? Okay? Energy comes out. The God said he's going to quicken you from the inside out. See, healing doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. So you meditating on it. You thinking about it. You saying it. It's building up your faith in it. And once that faith is built up, God can act. He said in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. There's a lot of people begging. You know, you don't have to beg God. Are you a parent and you have children? Okay, if your children ask you for a piece of bread, are you going to give them a snake? Are you going to give them a rock? Are you going to give them something that's harmful? I'm saying, man, I want to teach you a lesson. No, you're going to give them what they need. And that's what God says. God knows in order for us to fulfill his purpose here in life, we need healing. We need deliverance. We need, we need to walk in our healing, in our, in our, in our wholeness. Now, some, I can hear some people saying, oh, well, God puts it, God allows sickness so you can, so other people can see and then you can go through trials. Guess what? When God made Adam and Eve, did he bring in sick, did he make sickness at that time? Or were their bodies healthy and whole? When did sickness come? Sickness came when disobedience came. Sickness came when they, when they disobeyed God. Sickness came when God gave over, allowed the enemy, allowed Satan to have dominion, okay, and to have some authority here on this earth. But it was not of God. So what Jesus did is brought back our ability to exercise and to receive what Adam and Eve once had. 
The Bible says that Adam was the first one and Jesus was the second Adam. The first covenant, the second covenant. And now, 2,000 years later, we're grateful to be able to walk out our life according to, to getting the quickening of our spirit, getting healed from the inside because we have God living on the inside of us. You see, back in the day, God would just come around people. But now, since Jesus did what he did, he says, I'll fill you with the Holy Spirit. Now we got to be built up in the faith. And we get built up in the faith by what God says, not just what we say. But when we say what God says, he watches over his word to perform it, okay? Number four. Number four. I'm going to read a couple of some, some from the New Testament. Okay. Now coming up four, Matthew 8 and 3. Matthew 8 and 3. Okay, it says, I will be thou clean. This was a situation when the guy, a guy came to Jesus, man, and he was, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure, I can't remember if he had leprosy and he had some disease. And he said, God, he said, Jesus, if it be your will, please make me whole. Here's what Jesus said. I will. That means it is my intention. I will. What didn't he do? He didn't say if you jump through hoops, if you, if you, if you just do all these other things. He says, I will. He said, it is my will. Be clean. I hear God saying that to you today. He's saying it is to you today, no matter what's going on in your life. He's saying, I will, I will be clean, be healed. So what do you do? How do you make it practical to your life? You say, Father, I thank you. I thank you that it is your will for me to be healed. It is your will for me to be delivered. And I receive it now. It is my legal right to be healed. It is your legal right to be healed. If you ever been in the court system, it's all about the law, okay? It's all about the law. And when they say something is legal, then they, that means that it's free, it's liberated, and it's supposed to happen. If they say it's illegal, it's against the law. But the Bible said that Jesus fulfilled all of the law so that now we can walk in God's grace, which is his unmerited favor. We can walk and we simply receive. If I have a gift for you, if I have a gift for you, the only way that you can take advantage of it is by receiving it. You know what I mean? That's the only way you can take advantage of a gift. But if I make you do anything for it, if I make you jump through hoops for it, it's not a gift. It's something you earned. And so God is saying that, listen, he said, I will. It's my will for you to be healed because we represent him. And so therefore, we have to build up our faith in it. And as we build up our faith in what God's will is for our life, it becomes so confident. You're like, wait a minute. Jesus is already on it. He already rose. The resurrection has already happened. He's on the right hand of the Father. And therefore, he gave me the Holy Spirit. And he said, it's finished. So why in the world am I still facing this? Because maybe my faith is not built up in it yet. Maybe I'm listening to what somebody else might have said about, you know what? Hey, we all just going to go through, just deal with it. No, I'm not just dealing with it. I'm not going to, yeah, sure. Am I going to manage and make sure I do what I need to do? Yeah, I'm going to do that. But I'm going to believe God above everything else. And I'm going to speak what God said above anything else. I'm going to speak what the creator, my body, my mind, this universe said over anything and everything else. And he said, it's my will as you live here on this earth to be healed. He said, listen, Jesus said in John 17, when he was praying, he said, Lord, he said, Father God, I'm not asking you to take them out of this world. A lot of people praying just to get up out of here for different reasons. But Jesus said, I'm not praying that you take them out, but I'm praying that you give them strength while they're here. And God said, it is his will for you to be healed. And then he just told him, be thou clean. Instantaneously, from the inside, bam, he was clean. God, was, God wants to do a miracle in somebody's life today. He wants to do a miracle in somebody's life today. Every single day, God's word is still powerful. God is still in the business of healing, delivering, setting free. And then today, when you grab a hold of it, when you build yourself up in the most holy faith, you build yourself up. And how do you build yourself up? By hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Remember, it's not mental. It's not mm, thinking is happening. Nope. All you got to do is just be in the presence of God's word. And it builds your spirit up. It builds your spirit up. But you have to make yourself available. You have to make yourself available in order for it to happen. Okay, and the last thing. Last one I'll read. Matthew 8 and 17. It says, I took your infirmities. Jesus said, I took your infirmities, okay? And I'm 50, and then Matthew 8 and 17, the same one. He says, I took your infirmities 
and I bore your sickness. So let, 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 let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's make it really plain so we can see why practically, practically, it, you know what I mean? Some of the, a lot of this is our fault, okay? Or our negligence or our ignorance of why we're still dealing with some of the things that we're dealing with. Because if Jesus went through everything he went through for us, if he took it all, if he finished the law, if he fulfilled the law, if he did everything, if he was resurrected, he, he was resurrected, if he sat on the right hand of the Father, he gave us the Holy Spirit, if he did all that stuff, if he did all that stuff for a purpose, for a purpose, and what was that purpose? Part of that purpose. He says, I did all that to take your infirmities. Is anybody walking around with infirmities today that you haven't given over to the Lord? That you're not declaring, God, listen, you said this. This may be attack of the enemy right now, but the enemy was already defeated by you. And that's another benefit that you did. You defeated him and gave me power over him. That you said, whatever I bind on the earth is bound in heaven. I mean, whatever I don't tolerate here is not tolerated in heaven. Whatever I lose here is loose in heaven. If I bind up the enemy and all the things and all the things that's going on around my life that's not right, that's not good, Okay, if I bind that up and package it up and say, listen, I gather you. I speak to you, sickness. I speak to you, depression. I speak to you, poverty. I speak to you, discouragement. I speak to you, low self-esteem. I speak to you, rebellion. And I bind you up and I cast you down. And I loose, I loose the Holy Spirit of God. The spirit of peace, joy, happiness, love, calmness, forgiveness. I, I loose that now. God says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What did he say? Whatever you do. Because it's God's will for you to do it. It's God's will for you to have it. But there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people, and I know how it can be sometimes. You can be in the middle of something. It's like working out. It's like working out, and you get to the last set or the last two sets, and your body just feels like it's ready to just stop. But instead, you press on. That's why the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. It didn't say just sit back, let go, let God. You know what I'm saying? That, that suggestion right there is a lie from the pit of hell. Okay, let go and just let God. Now, you let go, if, you're, if you have fear, anxiety, and all that stuff, you let it go, you let it go. But letting go and just letting God say that you won't have anything to do with it. And basically saying, that, listen, there's nothing that you have to do that you don't have to take responsibility. But God says, fight, fight, fight the good fight of faith. That means what? Take God's word and speak it over your life. Walk around, meditate on God's word. Apply God's word to your life. Remember, what is faith again? Faith is the substance. Faith is the material, the reality of something that is hoped for. The evidence of it isn't seen yet. The Bible says God walked by faith. He says it's impossible to please him without faith. And so we must build up our faith. And so this scripture, Matthew 8 and 17, where it says, Jesus says, I took your infirmities. I bore your sicknesses. So we can walk around and we say, Lord, Father, I thank you because of what Jesus did. You took all my infirmities and I've given them to you. You bore all my sickness. You took it all. It doesn't belong to me. You purchased it all. You already did everything you need to do to take it from me so I can experience it. So that I can experience the, the opposite of it. I can experience the peace. I can experience the wholeness. I can experience it, you know, I can experience what you have for me to experience. Doesn't mean we don't need, doesn't mean we don't need doctors. No. Guess what? God give them wisdom for what we need. So we thank God for them. But when it comes down to the essence of sickness, infirmities, illness, disease, the Bible says that Jesus went to the cross for that. And so my question to you, my question to you. Did he go to the cross for it? Did he get buried? Did he have a sword in his side? Did he do all those things for everybody else and not you? Did he do all those things? Did he get resurrected? Did he follow everything he needed to do just so that way there would be one exception? No. The Bible says, man, if there was 99 sheep and one of them was lost, will God not leave the nine? Will he, we not leave the 99 and go get the one? Guess what? You're that one. I'm that one. And God says, I did it for you. I paid the price for you. And now you must walk in faith. You must walk in faith. I know it can be tough sometimes. I'm not seeing what I don't know. I'm not seeing what I heard. I'm seeing what I know. It can be tough sometimes. He says, in this world, you're going to face tribulation. But here's what he says. The just lives by faith. 
the just, the justify, live by faith. What is justify? Just as if you never sinned. Just as if you never was sick. Just as if you never was, was hurt. Just as if it never happened. You're going to live by faith because what does God say about it? And you say within your life, in your, in your soul, in your day, God, I'm believing your word. And I'm going to speak your word. And I'm going to speak it in faith. And I'm going to build up my whole most holy faith. And I'm going to say what you said. As a Christian, we do not have a right to say what we want. We don't have a right because he purchased our right. He gave his life to give us the right to say what he says because he knows that, he, that, that God is not watching over everything, all of our opinions. He's not watching over our just our ways. God says, I'm watching over my word to perform. Because he says, I've given my word. I sent my, I sent my word to heal you. God says, I've sent my word to heal you. What heals you? God's words does. How do I get words? How do I get the words in me? I read them. I meditate on them. I play them in my ear. I play them in my car. Okay, I saturate myself. If I, had, if I was trying to make tea, if I was trying to make tea, and I wanted to have some good taste in tea, and I have hot water, I put that tea bag in the water for, for one for 30 seconds to a minute. I'm still gonna have tea. I'm saturating it in there. But if I put that tea bag inside that water for two and a half minutes, three minutes, that tea is gonna be a lot more dense. That tea is gonna taste a lot better. That tea is gonna be more fulfilling. So is the same thing. In order for us to build up our faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It doesn't say hearing and hearing the people on your job. It didn't say hearing and hearing, hearing your own thoughts. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Just you practicing, sitting before God, let reading the words that are inspired about your life, it increases your faith. The Holy Spirit on the inside increases your faith. It does something on the inside that increases your faith. You're going through depression? Listen, God says that I came to bear it to you, I mean, to break the captive free. He came to break the captive free. He says, the garment of praise. He said, take the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What does that mean? Take the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Okay, praise God for who he is. Thank God for who he is. Just his name, just his acts, what he's done. And as you are doing that, the spirit of heaviness begins to lift. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. And so again, in this series today, God's food and faith for your life. Get your food and faith for your life. I hope you was encouraged today. Do me a favor. Go ahead and share this message. Uh, go ahead and encourage other people with it. Um, take these words. Apply them to your life. Build up your faith. Okay? Somebody need it. You need it. We all need it. The Bible says, man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Build up your faith today. We need this. We need to build up our faith, our confidence, our trust, our knowing. Because when you become, when you know something, it's like a basketball, it's like a basketball player, okay? When he's in a zone, when he's in a zone, bam, he just thinks that everything, everything he throws up just going to go in. Because there's a confidence, there's a knowing. So it's the same thing. When we throw up a prayer, when we say a prayer according to God's word, man, we just know. We just know God heard us. And we just know God's going to bring it to pass. Because he said it, he promised it. And we call God in the remembrance of everything he said. And today he says, I am willing. Be clean. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Be made whole. Be blessed today. I'm Donovan Darius, man. Appreciate you guys. Um, don't forget, January 23rd. Okay, January 23rd, I'm doing a free Life Goals uh, webinar. Okay, 7 o'clock to 8.30 or about 8.15. Uh, it's totally free. Yesterday I posted the link on the webinar. Sign up. Here's what you're going to get. You're not only going to have a good time while we're on there, but you're also going to get a free book, my Next Level Motivation book from last year. You're going to get a free copy of that. Not only that, I'm giving away a free book. I'm giving away a certain amount, a limited amount of my free, my latest book, which is called Living All Pro Book of Inspiration. I have over 270 quotes in there, and you get a chance to define it. What does it mean to you? It's to get the spark that you need so that way you can live your life to the fullness. You guys be blessed today. Sign up for the webinar. Don't forget to share the message. 
these messages will be on YouTube as well. So go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel, so that way you can pass the links around and you can get inspired and get what you need from there. You guys have a blessed day today. God bless you. Love you to life. Peace out.